Most large whales share a tragic characteristic. They sink to the bottom of the sea when they die. And so it goes unnoticed that an alarming number of whales are being killed by ship strikes every year. It's sunken evidence. These dead whales have a publicity problem. In this story, we're going to investigate what ship strikes mean for whale populations and what can be done to mitigate these incidents. Pictures like these show quite clearly what happens when a ship hits a whale. Whales can get lodged on the bows of large vessels, be badly injured, or wash up on the beach. But most of them die unreported in the oceans, with no photographic evidence. A global ship strike database logged about 1,200 collisions between whales and vessels in the years 2007 to 2016. But whale experts believe that the true number of deaths is far higher than the official count. One of them is Michael Fischbach, founder of the Great Whale Conservancy. Thousands of whales are hit and killed by ships every year. Thousands, no question about it. These experts assume that the number could be roughly 10 times higher. Some consider it 20 times higher. And others even more. The reason for this assumption is that almost every large whale species in the world is negatively buoyant. This means that a whale is denser than the water it displaces. When it dies, it will end up sinking to the bottom because its weight is greater than the buoyant force. And just like that, the full extent of the problem disappears from public view, along with the carcasses. For an animal with a low reproduction rate of just one calf every one to three years, this is a serious threat. And for endangered species like the blue whale, ship strikes could drive populations to the brink of extinction. For gradually recovering populations, like humpbacks, the increasing number of ship strikes could mean a painful backlash. Right now, there are more than 50,000 ships making their way around the globe, including container ships, oil tankers, and cruisers. Where shipping lanes overlap with whale habitats and migration routes, the risk of ship strikes rises. Whale experts have flagged the areas with the highest risk. An obvious question might spring to mind. Why aren't ships able to avoid whales? And why don't whales just get out of the ship's way? Let's start with the ships. Some of the world's biggest container ships are up to 400 meters long, with a maximum width of 60 meters. They can carry up to 24,000 containers each. Avoiding a whale requires the bridge personnel to detect it at a sufficiently great distance to change course or speed. And this is where the issue lies. Vessels of this size can only be maneuvered slowly. It takes them a number of miles to turn or divert course. And despite the efforts being made in research, an accurate method for detecting and avoiding whales is yet to be found. So, what about the whales? Large whales have lived in the world's oceans for millions of years. They have evolved to focus on feeding, mating, nursing their calves, and memorizing their migration routes and habitats. But they haven't evolved to recognize when a ship's bow is approaching. Even if a whale does see a ship, and not all whales have excellent eyesight, some species actually have very little vision. It might not know that the big thing on the surface could be a lethal threat to it. For this very reason, the sound of a ship might not send a warning to whales. They haven't learned that they need to keep their distance from the noise of engines and propellers. It also functions as an amplification of the existing acoustic pollution in the oceans, which complicates navigation and communication for them even further. And if you put all those things together, the whales do not have a chance. It is up to us to stop hitting the whales. They are not going to suddenly figure out how to stay away from these ships. It's not going to happen. 
The logical solution is to separate ships and whales. For years, whale experts, researchers, and conservationists have been trying to enforce this fundamental solution, called the Traffic Separation Scheme. Although it's an uphill struggle, a few initiatives have been put into action. One success story comes from the Panama Canal in the Gulf of Panama. Mostly humpback whales were moving through the waters near the entrance to the canal, while at the same time dozens of ships were using the canal every day. A traffic separation scheme was put in place with a new, narrow shipping route. Since then, the potential for ship strikes has decreased. A report showed that mitigation measures may have resulted in more than a 90% drop. Traffic separation schemes have been established in other areas too, but there are numerous high-risk areas on the map where rerouting can't be implemented. In this case, the next solution is finding the right way to protect whales. It's not about where, but when ships should sail. Let's have a look at the following scenario. Whales feed directly where their food source is, like humpback whales or blue whales that feed primarily on krill. Krill is a small crustacean that looks like a very small shrimp. And because it's photosensitive, it typically doesn't like light. In the daytime, whales have to dive down to depths of approximately 300 meters to find their food. But when it gets dark, the krill begin their migration from the depths up to the surface. And the whales follow the krill. So the whales are within the strike zone or the draft of these ships all night long, typically. But in the daytime, they're only within the strike zone of the ships when they're up getting air. And then they go down to the depths where their food is. When we cannot move the shipping lanes, the day-night issue or the day-night solution is one that we favor greatly. So ships could move during the day, but stop sailing at nighttime. The third solution is to reduce ship speed limit in high-risk areas. It's a method that was put in place near the Pacific entrance to the Panama Canal, for example. Researchers recommend a speed limit of 10 knots to reduce the severity of injuries and minimize the chance of collisions. So, solutions to protect whales do exist, and there are some encouraging success stories. But there are still places all over the world where too many whales are dying unnoticed every day. If the whales were not negatively buoyant, there would be so many bodies floating on the surface in the shipping lanes and near certain ports that this never would have been allowed to continue as long as it has. People would not have stood for seeing so many whale bodies floating in the ocean. And this, this, this problem would have been fixed already. The sunken evidence needs to be brought to the surface so that whale advocates get more public awareness and cooperation to stop these ship strikes. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to be notified about future uploads, subscribe and hit the alert button.